Hello, welcome to my channel, Eki Art. Today I'm drawing um, Frankie Stein from Monster High in her Sweet Screams getup. You can see here that I actually um, have already drawn Draculaura and I'm using her um, sketch as a base because I wanted them to be a, a pair. So I wanted them to match in style and in position and such. Um, I changed the face shape and I changed a bunch of things, but it's the same base essentially. So hopefully they look like a pair when it's all done. Now, another thing I want to bring up before we get too far into this is that <laughs> I know I zoom in and out a lot. I've edited and reduced it as much as I can. <laughs> I, I know it's not perfect. Um, I'm sorry. I know there's a navigator window that you can open in Clip Studio Paint, and I think it's in Photoshop as well, um, that gives you an overall look at your piece, but I just find it just doesn't work for me. It's just too small and I can't quite get the picture that I'm looking for, so um, that's why I don't use that. Um, here I'm just trying to draw in the hair. Uh, it took me a while just because <laughs> I was trying to match the volume and energy that I had in the Draculaura piece that I'd already done, which is the pair for this one. And it, because her hair is in pigtails and it's quite voluminous, it takes up a lot of the background in the picture. And I was really trying to mirror that here. And it also just, I think, looks better. Um, it captures more energy and looks more interesting. And I think I changed it a bit before um, because I realized the head sizes were not the same. That was kind of irritating at the time as I had to go back and change that. Uh, yeah, so always check the picture that you're referring to when you do this sort of work. I do want to say quickly that I looked up so many tutorials and question and answer forums of how to minimize the lines on the screen that get picked up when you record a monitor. Um, so many people said that I just needed to make the frame rates the same, but I tried doing that and it didn't fix anything. So unfortunately that's there. I'm going to try to fix it or minimize that before making another video, but um, yeah, sorry um, about that. Hopefully it's not too invasive. I do have a couple of videos that I've filmed before I really noticed that the lines were there, so I'm not sure what to do about them. Um, I might turn them into proper videos. I might just delete them and move on, but um, yeah, we'll see. So I'm trying to figure out what kind of color is created when um, the blushing is showing through the skin. So in the tips of your ears, around your nose, and where your cheeks are, usually they're a lot redder or pinker because of the blood flow in the increased capillaries under the skin. So yeah, I was just trying to figure out what color would be showing through considering that she has green skin, um, which was challenging, but I think in the end it, it worked out. It's just sort of a yellowish color. Um, yeah, you can also see that before I was uh, playing around with giving the Frankie picture a blue background and Draculaura a yellow background. Um, I actually prefer the color that the colors that are around that way um, it's closer to the box art itself and I just think those colors suit the different characters better but I'd already done Dracula with blue background in mind and all the shading and stuff had the blue bounce light and I didn't really want to have to go back and change all of that so in the end I just decided that Dracula will have a blue background and Frankie will have a yellow background and it's just how it's going to be. <laughs> So it's a new year and with that comes resolutions and I know that a lot of people come up with things that they want to change about themselves or things that they want to do in the new year and then never stick to them and there's every possibility that that will include myself. <laughs> I'm not unrealistic with my expectations but I hope that I can push myself and stick to the resolution that I have which is to draw every day. Um, I understand that it is a bit unrealistic, so when I say draw every day, I don't mean draw a masterpiece. I mean it can be a circle on a, pa a piece of paper. It can be anything. And I think that that'll really help me to stick to it. 
because it's really just about forming a habit. It's not really um, about creating ex excellent art. I'm hoping that with the practice every day, it will improve my art, but mostly it's just to get the habit down and to really, um, I guess just stop putting it off and stop being upset when I can't improve the way that I want to and my art doesn't look the way I want it to and comparing and stuff like that. Um, I'm wondering if, I mean, I know that pretty much everyone does that and it's not unique to myself, but I'm, I'm wondering like what it, like what are the resolutions that you guys have, if you have any? Um, I know I don't really have that many followers, so probably nobody is going to see that, but I, I don't mind. Um, I just want to throw it out there in case anybody sees this and has some resolutions specifically about art, but not um, only art based, because um, I don't know, I just I find it interesting and I'd love to hear what people have to say and what they want to focus on for the new year. Um, and good luck to everyone. I hope you all stick to what you really want as long as it's um you know good for you and not hurting anybody then you know all the best luck so here i'm just um coloring in the whites of the face so the eyeballs and the teeth um, something I learned is that you should never keep these things completely white. Um, it just makes it sort of less natural and it's much more natural to have a bit of an off-white color to it or um, also to make it a little bit darker so it's not quite so stark and bright. It's not really super unheard of information but just in case somebody out there doesn't know that, um, I find it's really uh, benefited my artwork to do that. I'm up to my favourite part of doing the eyes, adding the shine. Uh, this gives so much life to the face and it's really fun. Um, I think it's pretty easy to do. Um, I say as I'm going back and forth and undoing and redoing and adjusting trying to get it exactly the way I want it to be but um yeah no I think it is it is fun I think pretty much any artist will agree with that that um doing the shine of the eyes is a it's a real highlight oh my gosh pun intended <laughs> anyway this was a bit of a challenge because I normally either draw or paint really really realistic and copy a, a photo exactly or I do very sort of cartoony style and I this one's pretty cartoony too um, but I definitely tried to level up the rendering a little bit with these two pieces um, and it's definitely not perfect um, I'm not saying that it is I'm just saying that for me and for my work this is uh, I, I was experimenting with these two pieces uh, quite a bit um, picking up s some skills that I'd learned from other artists and uh, tips and try to sort of mix them all together and make something different. Um, another thing I did with this piece is that I actually took f photos off the internet of the the doll that this is based off of and that really helped in with rendering her jacket later on. Um, the shine on that I was really had no idea um, I had no idea how to render that and so using the photo reference really helped and honestly that's probably like the biggest advice that I would give to any artist is that you should always at least until you build up a decent visual library is use reference it will elevate your art and I'm not saying copy but I mean for your work definitely reference photos and definitely reference from real life and it'll really help you to get the the colors and the lighting and all that just just so much better than you could just from your own mind and obviously there's exceptions to this um there's some amazing artists that can 
have built up their visual library so much that they don't need to use reference anymore or they hardly use reference anymore but um, for beginners like myself I definitely recommend using reference it will it, I mean it's the only way to learn really um, yeah I just looked at my notes and I've actually got that one down twice so it's clearly important <laughs> to me at least um, which brings me to my other point is that this is not a scripted video um, I prefer draw with me videos that have a rambling sort of nature to them as well as the fact that this is um, about an hour long and I didn't want to have to write a script that would go for a whole hour and I might not talk for the whole hour but I don't know I just I just prefer videos that are sort of like a chat it's easier to listen to and it helps I don't know why um, but it really helps to focus me at least I think I think it's the same with some other people too that I've spoken to but it definitely helps me to focus and just kind of zone out and get the work done. Editing Eki here and I just wanted to say that this video was originally an hour long but I ended up cutting it down a bunch so it's actually only half an hour so <laughs> you don't have to listen to me talk for a whole hour it's just half an hour. And even then, I'm pretty sure I'm going to edit it a bit more and just have some music instead of me talking for parts of it. So, yeah. So a good question would be, what's your favorite part of creating art? Do you like um, coming up with the pose? I personally really like coming up with the pose, even though that's quite challenging. I, 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 I use a lot of references to help me with that. I even take my own references if I need to, um, which is often <laughs> more often than not. Um, it's really hard to find a perfect reference that's exactly what you're looking for without surfing around for like hours and hours. Um, and even then, you know, it's unlikely that you're probably going to find exactly what you're looking for. So yeah, taking your own references is definitely um, very helpful. So if you're wondering what I was just doing, um, I was just doing some hand stretches as my hands were getting really sore from drawing so much. Uh, this is pretty standard practice for lots for artists in general um, but just a reminder to do some hand stretches it's really important and speaking of uh, hand stretches my hands are actually cramping a little bit at the moment because I've been doing this hundred gesture challenge where you draw a hundred gesture poses and <laughs> silly me decided to try and cram in 50 in the first two days and I probably should have spaced that out a little bit better so I'm probably going to have a bit of a break from doing that. <laughs> but um, yeah, definitely do hand stretches. Don't do what I do. Do as I say, not as I do. So on top of that challenge, I'm currently actually doing another challenge called the Fresh Eyes Challenge from Love Life Drawing's YouTube channel. I'll link it in the description below. Um, it's only 10 days, so it's super manageable. And so far, I've been finding it exceptionally helpful. And I'm only halfway through, so it hasn't improved my art crazy amount but it's definitely it's definitely helping me so much and it's something I would absolutely recommend uh, especially to beginners wanting to improve their pose drawing the resources are amazing and there's a whole community you can like post your work and get feedback and the best part is it's actually completely free <laughs> and no I'm not sponsored or affiliated with them I really wish but no I just really think it's a great challenge and a great platform and I really would have wanted someone to recommend it to me so I'm recommending it to you Okay, so I don't know exactly what I want to say about this part, but this jacket was... 
Uh, as I said earlier, I really had no idea how to render this. Um, I have very little experience rendering um, this kind of shiny material and oh boy, I was not sure what to expect. Um, as I said earlier, in the end I got photos on, from online and just did my best to copy and interpret what I was seeing in those. So it's probably still not perfect, but um, it definitely came together. Um, I definitely messed up a few times and I've cut out most of that, but um, I, yeah, I messed up a f quite a few times. Well, I don't say messed up. You learn from everything you do, but I tried several times and I didn't like how it looked. So I started again and, or I just built on top of what I'd already done. Um, but yeah, in the end, I think it really, I think it really came together and it's probably not totally accurate. Um, there's some like fold lines in there that probably aren't uh, indicative of what the material's actually doing, but I'm pretty happy with how it came out for me, for, for my skills and my level and again, my poor visual library. <laughs> so um, yeah. Oh, and also I swapped to screen recording instead of recording um, myself drawing on the actual monitor. Uh, let me know what you prefer. I I think I prefer drawing, filming drawing on the monitor, although the screen recording comes out a lot crisper. So yeah, definitely let me know what you prefer down below in the comments. Thank you. Oh, and while you're there, if you don't mind and you have the time, um, I'd love to hear about what, um, like, who are your favorite artists? Who do you get inspiration from? And I, I'm just looking to absorb as much art as I can at the moment. And I, I would love to hear about people's favorite artists and yeah, just a name or a Instagram handle or anything link. I just really want to absorb a lot of art at the moment. And I would love to hear what people's favorite artists are. Um, any recommendations, I guess. So yeah, thank you. So about here is where I decided I wanted to try and make the tie seem like a see-through kind of jelly uh, material and I don't keep it in the end but it was really fun to try and experiment with this and I think it kind of worked. Um, I didn't end up going with it because on the original doll the tie is seems to be a, like a it's a solid plastic so I know it's plastic and it's interpretive um, it's obviously they're not going to make it out of jelly but I think it's meant to be licorice and so in the end I just kept it as a opaque material instead of the see-through jelly-like substance that I tried to turn it into here. Thank you. 
Here's another thing that I wasn't quite sure how to render. Um, I, I thought I did, and then um, I realized as I was going on with it that I was a bit stuck. So I actually, again, looked at pictures online of uh, shiny gloves and also pictures of the original doll that this is based off of. And that really helped me to, um, I wouldn't say make it realistic because I don't think it's still, I still think it's off. But um, it definitely helped me to make it more, uh, to make it better than what I could have done from my own imagination. So yeah. And I know I'm doing the hands right now, but I do work on the gloves some more. It doesn't stay like this. It does get more finished than this. So yeah, sorry about that. And here I've just swapped to my iPad because the brush that I'm using to shade the hair, to color, you know, render the hair, is I haven't yet figured out how to recreate that in Clip Studio Paint. So it's not that big a deal. I could have used a different brush, but I used this one to render Dracula's hair in the accompanying piece. So I really wanted to, again, keep them um, consistent. So, um, the only option really that I had was to swap to my iPad and start doing that. So I actually recorded both the screen itself, like what's going on under the screen, <laughs> if that makes sense, and then also me drawing on the iPad. Um, but that footage, here's some of it, but most of it was a bit, it was a bit glary, so I ended up just putting in the screen recording over the top, so um, yeah. I I. I had a really good time rendering this hair. Um, I, I don't know if I should say rendering or painting, I don't know. But I had a really good time painting this hair, and which is weird for me because until recently I really struggled to paint hair. Um, I actually did a, a style challenge where I took six of my favourite artists, or six artists who inspire me, and I, I tried to draw my own character in their styles, so kind of like the... Um, Actually, I don't know if there is a challenge that's like that. Um, I know that there's challenges where you draw a character in styles of like cartoons and shows and stuff, but I don't know if there's any that are actually dedicated to artists themselves. Um, anyway, you can find the template for that on my Instagram and my Tumblr and Twitter and all that jazz, so if you're interested in that, you can go find it. <laughs> um, anyway, um, so until I'd done that little self-challenge, I really, I really struggled to color hair and to shade hair, but after doing that challenge, I really picked up on a lot of what those artists were doing, and I kind of mixed them all together, and now I feel much more confident painting hair. So, if that's, 
if you're struggling to paint something in particular, again, references are always good. Refer to your favorite artists, use inspiration, and hopefully collectively with all that information going in, you can start to produce some work coming out. All right, so we're nearly done. I'm just coloring in the little candies on her hair, um, or as we call it in Australia, lollies. <laughs> um, this was pretty cut and chase. It was pretty standard, um, shiny things. Um, um, it was it was fun though. I definitely had fun doing it. And the video is almost over, so I'll wrap up quickly. But thanks so much for watching. Um, I really appreciate every single view that this video gets and thank you for <laughs> bearing with my insufferable self rambly dialogue <laughs> for half an hour or whatever it ends up being um thank you so much have a great day take care